welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar this is the first part of the course we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana vishvesham satchidanandam vandeham yokhilan jagat chari karti bari bharti संजरी हरति लीलया विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम योखिलन जगत चरी करति बरी भरति संजरी हरति लीलया सो फार वी हैव स्टडीड सम की थियोरेटिकल पोजिशंस some basic tenets of the theory of compounding as stated in the grammar of sanskrit written by panini in his paninian grammar and the paninian grammatical tradition in the course we have studied several basic terms we studied what is samartha we also then went in deep into the two types of samarthya namely ekarthi bhav and vyapeksha we studied the passages collected from the great vyakarana mahabhashya of the great patanjali in which the distinction between the ekarthi bhav and vyapeksha is clearly stated we also stated the relationship between the vyapeksha and the ekarthi bhav we also studied that there are three features of ekarthi bhav three features of samasa aikapadya aikarthya and aikasvarya we also figured out the sequence between these three where the aikarthya occupied the initial position in accordance with the process of speech production described in the paninian grammatical tradition then we also studied the concept of asamartha samasa before that we also took note of the terms vritti and parartha thus on the whole we have been studying these basic terms the basic theories on the basis of which the process of compounding takes place and the compound output is generated we have taken a very broad view and then we have based the positions taken by the sanskrit grammatical tradition in that broad view and we have noticed that there are certain areas which the speakers of sanskrit have not considered making them to be the conditions for making the compounds and that remains open and therefore the sanskrit grammatical tradition did not pay attention and did not also get a chance to formulate a rule to account for such linguistic usages in the course of time however when we see modern languages having different kinds of usages in this regard we can still take help of these basic insights and the basic theoretical framework proposed 
in the Paninian grammatical tradition to account for these modern usages. In this lecture, we shall study some more basic terms and some more basic processes. First, we shall study the terms Nitya Samasa and Anitya Samasa, also known as Vaikalpika Samasa. These are the terms often used and the word Nitya and Samasa are used by Panini himself in his grammar Ashtadhyayi in the sutras. And so certain Samasas are termed as Nitya Samasas and certain others are considered as Anitya Samasas or Vaikalpika Samasas. Let us try to understand what Nitya Samasa stands for and what Anitya Samasa stands for. Nitya Samasa is explained in two ways. The first one is Avigraha Nitya Samasa. Nitya Samasa is that one which cannot be dissolved, which means that the meaning that is conveyed, which means that the meaning that is conveyed by the samasa cannot be conveyed by the constituents being separate or independent in the form of a sentence. This goes directly against the very basic principles that we have been studying, samaha, arthaha, for example, but that is the reason why these types of samasas, they are treated in this particular manner. Because in the usage, we do find such words whose compounding does convey an additional meaning over and above the meaning of the constituents. And we need to account for such forms an Indian grammar has called them Nitya Samasa. Only Samasa is the one that conveys that particular meaning and not the dissolution. So, Avigraha Nitya Samasaha. The second explanation of Nitya Samasa is Asvapada Vigraha. Asvapada Vigraha Nitya Samasaha which means which cannot be dissolved with the same constituents visible or audible in the final output. The final output is the compound output and we start the process with the constituents. Now we cannot dissolve the compound using the same constituents that are available to us in the final output. Either there has to be some addition or there has to be some modification within the constituents. And that is why it is called a svapada vigraha. Let us study what is a vigraha nitya samasaha and let us take an example. This is a samasa which cannot be dissolved, which is very strange and which is exceptional. Each and every samasa is dissoluble and is dissolved in terms of sentence. So samasa falls back on the sentence. Samasa comes from the sentence and samasa is embedded within a sentence. But this kind of samasa is such that it cannot be dissolved. What it means is that the meaning that is denoted only by the samasa and the underlying structure does not denote that meaning which is denoted by the samasa, which is the meaning that is additional to the meaning of the constituents. The constituents would convey some meaning and the addition of those meanings would amount to some basic meaning of the compound, but there is something additional which is not part of any of the constituents. 
and that is what is conveyed by the samasa and that is why that additional meaning cannot be ascribed to any of the constituents and if we are not able to do that it is not possible to dissolve this compound compound without accounting for this additional meaning this is the reasoning why such a samasa cannot be dissolved such samasas are very exceptional and they are primarily of the nature of the technical terms and also some pragmatic meanings like kshep the one which panini is going to use quite often kshep is censure and when censure is an additional meaning you cannot assign censure to any of the constituents and that is the reason why you declare that this samasa cannot be dissolved so there are names like uddalaka pushpa bhanjika and varana pushpa prachayika these are the names of some of the games these are the compounds that are accounted for by the sutra nityam krida jivika yoho so uddalaka pushpa bhanjika this is the name of a krida a play so it does convey some additional meaning namely the play and it is not just the bhanjana or bhanjika of the flowers of uddalaka so the constituents are not capable of expressing the entire meaning the compound expresses and that is why the grammatical theory considers not dissolving this particular compound and saying that the entire meaning together with the additional meaning is what is conveyed by this entire one unit uddalaka pushpa bhanjika same is true about varana pushpa prachayika and then we have meanings like censure or kshepa which are denoted by indirect references so there is kakapeya nadi a compound which is generated in the additional sense of the adhika arth this could be ninda or this could also be stuti when it is ninda what it means is a river with water only fit to be consumed by a crow so when you say kakapeya nadi you are not just describing a river but you are also adding a sense of censure that this is not a real river because it doesn't contain any water bed it doesn't contain water it contains only that much water which can satisfy a crow that means there is no water absolutely so this is the censure and neither kaka nor peya denotes this particular additional meaning but the compound as a whole denotes if you separate the constituents and say kakaihi peya nadi this would not convey the same idea of the censure which is conveyed by the compound kakapeya nadi so the censure is the meaning of this compound which is over and above the meaning of the constituents and so the grammatical theory considers the dissolution of such compounds as not possible a vigraha so one are games names of games and two denotes censure by saying that the river is so small that it can satisfy only a crow with very little water this censure is denoted only by a samasa this is a specific special purpose served by samasa and that is the reason why such samasas are called nitya samasas because there is their vigraha is not possible is not done now we go to the nitya samasa which is called asvapada vigraha asvapada vigraha means which cannot be dissolved with the same constituents 
visible in the final output. And there are two types of this. The dissolution involves modified words and two, the dissolution involves additional words. The compound cannot be dissolved using the same constituents visible in the finally generated output form. Let us take the first example where the dissolution involves modified words. This is Asvapada Vigraha Nitya Samasa. For example, we have Kumbhakara, which means a potter, which means one who makes a pot. Now, Kumbhakara consists of two constituents, Kumbha and Kara. But when we dissolve this compound, we cannot say Kumbha Karaha or Kumbhasya Karaha. This is not possible. We have to say Kumbham Karoti Iti Kumbha Karaha. So Kara in the compound assumes the modified shape Karoti in the dissolution. And that is the reason why this is termed as an example of Upapada Samasa which is Nitya Samasa of this kind Asvapada Vigraha. Similarly, we have Grihastha, a household that is one who resides in a house or Jalada, a cloud, one who gives water or Bhupa, a king, one who protects the earth. All these four examples, they are the examples of the Upapada Samasa which is termed as Nitya Samasa primarily because in Grihastha you cannot dissolve the compound using the same constituents as you do in Rajapurusha. You cannot say Grihasya Sthaha. You cannot say Jalasya Daha. You cannot say Bhuvaha Paha. This is not possible. You have to say Grihe Tishthati. So Stha is taking the shape of Tishtha. Jalam Dadati. Bhuvam Pati. So there are different forms than the ones which are visible or audible in the compound which are part of the dissolution and that is why this is Asvapada Vigraha Nitya Samasa. So Kumbhakara cannot be dissolved as Kumbhasya Karaha, Grihastha cannot be dissolved as Grihasya Sthaha, Jalada cannot be dissolved as Jalasya Daha, Bhupa cannot be dissolved as Bhuvaha Paha. The dissolution involves modified words. So Kumbhakara is dissolved as Kumbham Karoti, Grihastha is dissolved as Grihe Tishthati, Jalada is dissolved as Jalam Dadati, and Bhupa is dissolved as Bhuvam Pati. So Kara and Karoti, Stha and Tishthati, Da and Dadati, Pa and Pati, there is obviously a change in the shape of the form. So, the resolution involves modified words and not the same words which are actually part of the output in the form of a compound. Then the other examples of Asvapada Vigraha are the resolution involving modified words are these Pratidinam, Anurupam and Yathashakti. So Pratidinam means every day, Anurupam means fitting to the form and Yathashakti means in accordance with the strength. In these examples, Pratidinam cannot be dissolved as Prati and Dinam. Anurupam cannot be dissolved as Anu and Rupam. Yatha Shakti cannot be dissolved as Yatha and Shakti. What we mean is, these compounds cannot be dissolved using the constituents in the given form in which they appear in the final output. So Prati needs to be put in a different way. It needs to be expressed in a different manner. And so on. And that is the reason why this is called Asvapada Vigraha Nitya Samasa. The dissolution of these compounds are the following. 
So pratidinam it is, is dissolved as dine dine, anurupam as rupasya yogyam, yathashakti as shaktim anatikramya. So instead of prati, anu and yatha occupying any position in the dissolution, we see different words, dine, yogyam, anatikramya in the dissolution. And it is these modified words which are replaced by the words that are found in the final output for a common perception. So, pratidinam, anurupam and yathashakti are therefore called asvapada vigraha nitya samasas. When we have the resolution involving additional words, that also is called asvapada vigraha. Here are the examples. Gajanana, Ekadanta and Lambodara. Gajanana, Ekadanta and Lambodara, all these three words refer to Lord Ganesha. The meaning of the words are, Gajanana means one who has a face of elephant. Ekadanta means one who has one tooth. Lambodara means one who has big belly. Now, Gajadana has got constituents Gaja and Anana. Ekadanta has got constituents Eka and Danta. Lambodara has got constituents Lamba and Udara. None of them refers to Lord Ganesha. So Gajanana cannot be dissolved as Gajasyananam. Ekadanta cannot be dissolved as Ekahadantaha. And Lambodara cannot be dissolved as Lamba Mudaram. So we need to take additional words in order to dissolve these compounds. So Gajanana is in fact dissolved as Gajasya Ananam Iva Ananam Yasya Saha. So this Iva Ananam Yasya and Saha, these are the words which are additional, which are used to dissolve the compound without which the meaning of the compound will not be adequately conveyed. Similarly, ekaha dantaha yasya saha. So the words yasya saha are additionally used. Lambam udaram yasya saha. Once again, yasya saha are the two words additionally used which complete the meaning. But they are not part of the final output. The final output consists of only lamba and udara, eka and danta, gaja and anana. And the remaining words are not part of the final compound output. And that is the reason why this is called Aswapada Vigraha. Now we note that in the case of these compounds, these additional words, Yasya Saha, etc., these indicate the head which is outside of the compound. This is the peculiarity of these types of compound, also known as Bahuvrihi type of compounds. So in Bahurihi, the head remains out of the constituents of the compound, a very peculiar kind of compound, Bahurihi. So after having studied the explanations of Nitya Samasa, namely Avigraha and Asvapada Vigraha, let us study which are the Nitya Samasas. Avyayi Bhava is mainly Nirnitya Samasa. Just as we have Anurupam and Yatha Shakti and so on and so forth, all the Avyayi Bhavas, almost all, there are of course some exceptions, but otherwise almost all Avyayi Bhava Samasas, they fall under this particular category. Bahubrihi as well as Dvandva also fall under the category of Nitya Samasa. Similarly, within the Tatpurushas, we have Upapada Tatpurusha, Gati Tatpurusha, Pradi Tatpurusha and Nay Tatpurusha, which can be considered as Nitya Samasas. We shall be studying Upapada, Gati, Pradi and Nay Tatpurushas in this particular course and we shall be studying Avyayi Bhava, Bahuvrihi and Dvandva in the second part of the course, the second course.
except avyayi bhava all other types of nitya samasas namely bahuri and dvandva they are stated in the adhikara nityam in the ashtadhyayi 2216 whereas most of the avyayi bhava is stated before the adhikara vibhasha 2111 and vibhasha means optionally so most of the statements stating the avyayi bhava compound they are not governed by the term optionally and therefore they are also considered to be the nitya samasas now what is a anitya samasa what is a vaikalpika samasa the vaikalpika samasa in contrast can be said to be one that its dissolution is always done with the swapadas so swapada vigraha vaikalpika or vigraha which can be dissolved so dissolution is done and is done with the help of the constituents visible in the final output of the compound this is called vaikalpika samasa what it means is that meanings can be denoted by both a compound formation as well as the underlying sentence and they both convey the same meaning samartha and that is the feature of the vaikalpika samasa this vaikalpika samasa is governed by the adhikara vibhasha optionally from 2111 up to 2216 the examples of anitya samasas are vibhakti tatpurusha as well as karma dharaya and we shall be studying both these types in this particular course in the later part to summarize nitya samasas are peculiar types of samasas they indicate peculiar speech habits of speakers of the language they do have the underlying constituent sentence structure there is no doubt about it but the process of compounding is used by the speakers for specific additional meaning elements to be denoted by the compounds alone and not by the underlying constituent sentence structure and not by any ordinary sentence the by default procedure of deriving a compound remains the same the sentence structure is the input and the samasa is the output which is a pratipadika or a nominal root this samasa is always contrasted or compared with or explained by the underlying sentence structure that is what its base is namely the arthakasha now we shall study the procedure to derive the compound in the next lecture these are the references the traditional sources on which we base our explanation thank you very much